Now, on this basis, Marx claims you become also alienated from your species being. Now, the question is, how does species being uh, here become identified? I mentioned species being in a, in a very minimal sense, in a natural sense, right? A biological organism has a species being by not only being of a certain type, but insofar as there is such a thing as reproduction with heredity, uh, and in that sense involves reproduction, uh, the individual is a member of a species, the living individual is both cause and effect of itself as a species, right? The individual produces another of the same kind. And in that respect, you determine yourself as having a species being. Now, Marx here is concerned with human species being having something distinctive about it. And he speaks about it in a way in sort of natural terms. What does it refer to that distinguishes our species being from that of animal species being, meaning dumb animal species being, pre-discursive? Yeah. Make your, make your tools, you produce new needs. Well, not only do you, do you, in a sense, you're able to produce new needs, which is to say, in a way, that there are no predefined limits to our needs, what else is the other side of that? Which is, in some respect, implied by the way in which we can produce whatever instruments are required to satisfy these new needs, which, in a sense, we have the liberty or freedom to produce, as opposed to being restricted to simply doing what a beaver does and building dams that satisfy the needs that they have biologically and are fixed by their species being. You can produce excess needs? Well, you can produce, you could say, when you say excess needs, needs in excess of what you need to survive. Right. But that also means that the activities you engage in and how you relate to nature does not have any fixed, limited, particular scope. Because if, in a sense, your needs can be anything you choose, and your activities are, are, are capable of having a universal extension, your species being is to be found in terms of this universal appropriation of nature. That is not fixed and limited to the particular spheres of activity that define other non-human species. So, in a certain respect, here the species being that we have has to do with our having a universal character that animals do not have. And we have a kind of universal relationship to the world in which we find ourselves. And Marx, you may, you may have seen, associates that with freedom. We might ask, what's the connection between freedom and this universality of our species being? What's the connection? Think of the, the opera side. If, if we had a particular as opposed to universal species being, our scope of activity would be fixed biologically by the instinctual limits of what we are, which is genetically determined. Whereas we're set free of these limits. We have this universal species being. Well, how do we become alienated from this universal scope and the freedom it implies? Well, uh, the world that in a sense is our oyster that we more and more produce as we see fit for the sake of needs that are, can be completely artificial and involve anything that we can think of or, or manage to produce, all of that now lies in the hands of someone other than we who engage in the productive activity. This aspect of human species being is now something that belongs to an alien power consisting of those who employ us and our activities are exercised in a way where we find ourselves always alienated from, estranged from our species being. Now, in conjunction with this, Marx adds the final alienation estrangement, that we are in some respect separated from one another. We are alienated from one another. Now, how are we alienated from one another? How does that come from? How are we alienated from one another? In the employee-employer relationship. Now, why does that involve alienation here? Um, because one is the employee's, uh, you know, their, I guess, ability to labor on something is contingent on the employer giving them a job. Yeah, but one could also say that, look, both sides are interdependent. <clears throat> the employer can't do anything without a labor force, and vice versa. So there's a kind of interdependence. It is a relationship. Well, and then the, we might also ask... Does the interdependency... Ask, yeah. um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. I want to stop here in a moment, but... Yeah, does that interdependency, yeah. um, I guess, disrupt that contingency? Well, to some degree, the presumption is that even though there is a relationship here, obviously, and Marx can't deny that, there's something about this relationship that 
involves a stark separation and division. It's devoid of the kind of reciprocity that one might be looking for in terms of a non-alienated relationship of man and man. Here there's a situation of a kind of dependency, even if it may be mediated by a contract where you agree to enter employment. The very fact that the product, the means of production, everything involving your species being lies alien to you, puts you in a situation where you are compelled to find employment. You are compelled to find employment. And, comp and compelled to enter into a situation where your entire active life functions under the thumb of this other power. 